Nowadays, Kyle Busch is one of the most polarizing drivers in NASCAR. While more fans hate him than love him, he still is one of the sport's most popular drivers though. But back at the end of the 2000s and into the 2010s, Kyle Busch was the bane of NASCAR fandom's existence. But why was there so much hate? Well, it had mostly to do with this one guy, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale Jr. at the end of the 2000s wasn't just the most popular man in NASCAR, but he was also one of the most popular men in the world. And in 2008, he was in a new car with a new team driving the number 88 Chevy for Hendrick Motorsports. And while he was running quite well, he was still winless in the first quarter of his first season. So the pressure was mounting and he really needed to get the job done. Meanwhile, the man that he replaced was Mr. Kyle Busch, and he was leading the points and absolutely killing his competition in the new number 18 Toyota. Coming into Richmond, he already had two wins to his name on the season, and he was looking primed for a lot more. Richmond was a great track for both drivers, but there was one man that they would both have to beat, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin won the pole for the 2008 Dan Lowry 400, and he shot out like a cannon. Hamlin was hungry. In the past 61 races, he had only won twice. One of these was at one of his Virginia home tracks of Martinsville Speedway. Now he just needed to complete his Virginia homecoming in spring of 2008 with the win at Richmond. Early on, Hamlin led the pack, and the pack was full of comers and goers. Some cars were more in qualifying trim and they fell back while others in race trim charged forward. Behind Hamlin directly was the DEI duo of Mark Martin in the number eight car and Martin Truex Jr. in the number one car. But neither could keep pace as the run wound on. By the 30 lap mark, Hamlin was already lapping slow cars. This would be the theme of the first long run of the night a run that would only be disrupted by Johnny Sauter having a right front flat. This wouldn't be the last time that a tire deflation would influence the night. So after the first stops of the race, once again, the field came back to the green, Hamlin serving as the Pied Piper. But behind him, the scoring ticker was still shifting. Both Kyle Busch and Dale Jr. were marching to the front. Busch was in third by the 80th lap mark, and Jr. was up to sixth. But much like the start of the night, Hamlin led the way into the long run. What Hamlin was doing was shooting off to a second or two lead in the first 20 laps of each run, and then maintaining that gap or slowly building it as the rest of the run wound on. But just as with the first run, a caution prevented the field from getting to a full fuel run. This caution was due to debris. And once again, in part due to being the number one pit stall, Hamlin got out of the pits first and led the field to the green, again. But this time, the field didn't fall into a long run as the yellow flew again, this time for the 42 of Juan Pablo Montoya spinning. This only turned out to be a speed bump though, as once they went back to green, Hamlin would keep the lead. It's important to note that passing the halfway point of the night, the 11 had led every lap of the race. He was on track to do something that hadn't been done in nearly a decade, lead every single lap of a race. This would come to an unfortunate and untimely end though, as after causing a caution himself due to spinning, AJ Allmendinger broke the perfect night of the 11 by staying out of the pits an extra lap to lead. No matter. Once it cycled out, the race still looked to have no change whatsoever. But trouble was on the horizon, and the first hint was a crash between Brian Vickers and Paul Menard. But the biggest incident of the night was still to come. So it's a great problem to have, but it, it can't Turn be two. a problem. Sorry, they all stacked up right there. Sorry, Larry. One car, uh, Kurt Busch, slow off the corner. We got, we got Spin, problems. crash, turn three. Trouble. And they just keep stacking in there. What turned into well, one car problem over in turn two ended up with all these cars tore up in turn three. Inside wall, and it was on from there. It was uh, hit Carpentier's teammate, Elliot Sadler, couldn't check up quick enough, got in the back of Patrick. Boy, did you see Ryan Newman just go, all those guys going by on the apron. There were some major players involved in this caution. 
numerous chase caliber drivers either had their nights hurt or just straight up ended as the red flag was lifted upon the field. And in total, 11 of the 43 cars were involved. Like Hamlin's laps led, another perfect night was ended as well with this caution, as all 43 cars were running on track. Well, not anymore. And the number only diminished once they got back to racing. AJ Allmendinger, the 84 car, Michael McDowell in the double zero car. This would prove, though, to only lead to last stop before the last long run of the night. Once again, Hamlin would run off, but this time, Rowdy Bush and Dale Jr. made chase after usurping the DEI duo for second and third. And as the lap count ticked above the 300 mark, the 18 and the 88 stayed within vision of the lead, breaking away from the rest of the pack and doing something that really no one had done all night, keeping some semblance of pace with the 11 car. And at this time, the gap had went down as Bush began to threaten the 11th vice grip on the pack, with Earnhardt not far behind. And with just past 50 to go, the race's complexion changed again. Or does there, after the contact. Yeah, no, he just went over the top of Michael, and I think Michael thought they were still racing. With 30 to go, Hamlin charged out to another lead. But behind him, Dale Jr. had pounced on Kyle Busch. But unlike the last few runs, Hamlin didn't get much more than a second out in front of them. Something was different this time. Steve, they are catching Hamlin, even though they're side by side. Something's Denny, Hamlin, Denny Hamlin has a flat tire, Mike. He just said they're going to get me. I've got a flat tire. After leading a record high at Richmond of 381 laps, Hamlin's night deflated. The crowd of 110,000? Elated. Earnhardt was looking to nab his first win in exactly two years from this same race in 2006. Behind him, Kyle Busch was doing everything he could to catch the blue and white 88. And he'd catch a huge break, coming in the form of nine laps to go with Denny Hamlin stopping out of turn four. But he'd keep going. And to this day, Fans still hold anger towards Hamlin over this. Yet, even with that being said, it's relatively a forgotten moment. Because this moment led to one of the most infamous moments in the history of NASCAR. The rest, like people say, is history with this race. Five to go. Green flag. Oh, the 18 He spun the tires. Big, big time. And that lets the 07 Clint Boyer pull right up there. And there goes Mark Martin in that army car. Going to get interesting. Junior went up the hill pretty high, but I think that's his line. And Harvick's coming. He's the first car on fresh tires. He's inside of Truex into turn three. You know, after losing the race last night because he didn't get tires, it'd be kind of fun if Harvick could get back up there. I think he'll gain some positions. I'm just not sure he's going to have enough laps to get up there to these top two or three. Four to go. They just got blocked real big time going into turn one. Boy, Kyle one Busch car. got a great run off turn two down the back straightaway. You know he'll pack it down into turn three. Oh, he's boogieing down in there, baby. But he's... will it stick? And Junior gives him the bottom. Junebug washes up. Junebug's got that high line. He wants to run it. But I tell you, that 18 is going to get under him right here. Three to go. Here he goes. Junior goes up the hill. Let's see if he can get a bite on the bottom of the racetrack. They'll be side by side down the back straightaway. Oh, man, that was tight off turn two. He's got him. I believe he's got him this time. Oh, he turned it. No. Oh, he turned oh, it. No. no. What had happened was that Earnhardt had chosen the high line, while Bush used his short run speed on the low line. Coming out of two, Bush ran right up to Junior's side as he missed the corner. The two went side by side into turn three, with the 88 pinning down the 18 and the 18 not giving a single inch. To this day, Kyle Bush says it was unintentional, but also because of Earnhardt's history with him in the recent year, he really couldn't care less what happened to Junior that night. Intentional or not, the narrative was set. Kyle Busch had officially replaced Jeff Gordon as public enemy number one for both Junior Nation and the majority of NASCAR fans. He had went from an early season feel-good story of 2008, the man who had earned Toyota their first cup win, to the villain of NASCAR. But in the end, 
Bush still would win out, as he would fit perfectly into the villain role. He'd win six more races in 2008 and has since won two Cup Series titles. But on that spring Richmond night, the intertwining of fates made for a relatively mundane Richmond race to become one of the most important races in motorsports in America in the 21st century. But with that, I'm going to leave it all to you. What are your thoughts on Kyle Busch today in the present? Do you love him? Do you loathe him? Do you not care whatsoever about him? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on the video, share the video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content like this. And a big thank you to all my members who supported the channel through the last couple months. It means a ton. So until next time, have a good one. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before the end of the video, did you really think that me, a diehard Dale Jr. fan, would leave out the part where Jr. spins Kyle Busch out the next Richmond race? Here you go. Have a good one and watch Kyle Busch get spun out by Dale Jr. They've been working on that car. Every oh, they got well, together. And Kyle Busch goes around. It's weighed 185 laps, Dale. Yeah, I guess I was wrong about that. I think you meant two laps. <laughs>